二零一七年嘅第三條題目咧，就係考我哋植物繁殖嘅。咁呢幅圖咧，我哋見到咧兩樣嘢。第一啦，就係呢兩棵樹仔啦，佢哋都係同一款物種嘅開花植物嚟嘅。而今次呢度咧有三朵花，我哋要關注嘅就係 A、B、C 三朵花。嗱，呢零一七年第二條題目咧就係講食菠蘿嘅。成條題目咧就係去圍繞翻喺呢兩棵嘅開花植物之間嘅某啲過程係發生咗。咁有啲咩嘅提問呢？咁 part A 咧就問我哋啦 ，Y 嘅呢個步驟係乜嘢呢？」咁其實啦，你會見得到 X 又好 ，Y 都好呢，其實都係全花粉嘅。咁所以 part A 就係考緊我哋有關於自花全粉同埋二花全粉嘅分別啦。咁啊圖都俾咗大家㗎啦。咁既然啦，我哋要分別開自花全粉同二花全粉，咁定義呢就冇得走雞㗎啦。咩叫自花全粉呢？就係、是、當啲花粉由佢嘅花藥傳到去同一朵花。或者係另一朵花嘅柱頭嗰樹，但係啦，呢兩朵花咧都要屬於同一棵植物，即係一號仔嘅，即係 B 傳俾 A 或者 B 傳翻俾自己，阿 B 咧都係屬於自花全粉。咁而家 process Y 咧就係 B 呢朵花嘅花粉就由佢自己嘅花藥傳到去另一棵樹仔，阿二號仔佢嘅 C 花即係嘅柱頭嗰樹。咁所以啦，佢就一定係二花全粉啦。咁呢條題目有啲咩嘅變奏呢？今次呢，就齋問你一分，哦，究竟佢係邊款全粉啦？下次梗係問埋你點解啦。咁我哋點樣解釋啊？咪用返定義去解釋囉。哦，二花全粉就咁解咁解。又或者啦，你要講返呢，哦，而家我哋發現呢啲花粉就由 B 花 in the individual one 就傳到去 C 花 in the individual two 咯。B 呢，就問我哋啦，當做完二花全粉之後啦。要我哋描述下究竟有啲咩嘅過程去發生咗，而導致到有受精作用嘅出現呢？咁當然成條題目啦，就係考返右手邊呢幅圖啦，要排返一個正確次序咯。當啲花粉去到個柱頭嗰樹，花粉呢就會去生成一條花粉管。就會將個花粉入面盛載住嘅雄性配子，就沿住花粉管呢，就沿住個花柱就去到個配株個樹，或者個株孔個樹。然之後啦，嗰、那個雄性配子咧就會經過個豬孔，就被釋放入到去個胚珠入面，同胚珠入面嘅雌性配子結合，呢個 fuse with 其實就即係 f e r t i l i z e 啦。喺書本咧都有一個好直接了當嘅描述噶啦。呢條題目咧有一樣嘢要提一提大家嘅，就係、是、花粉唔等於雄性配子，胚珠亦都唔等於雄性配子。咁我哋點形容佢呢？花粉係承載住入面係有雄性配子，而胚珠咧亦都係承載住雌性配子，就等同於我哋講個水樽入面載住啲水，你唔會講個水樽就係水噶嘛，所以你都唔會走去講咧花粉去令到胚珠受精嘅，係花粉入面嘅雄性配子同個胚珠入面嘅雌性配子結合。呢、这個先係受精作用。好，跟住去到 part C 啦，佢就要我哋去解釋返 Y 呢個步驟二花全粉，比起 X 呢個步驟自花全粉係較為好。喎。但係咩叫好啊？就用演化嘅角度去理解啦。所以你見到呢，呢度有個圖表呢，就去比較返自花全粉同埋二花全粉各自有冇啲咩嘅好處同埋唔好處啦，同埋呢演化嘅定義啦。演化有咩定義啊？演化係一個過程，就係講緊有一啲本身已經出現緊嘅物種。佢哋如何經過一段長時間之後，去衍生一款新嘅物種出現啦？嗱，所以留意一下啦，演化係一個過程，佢唔係一個結果嚟嘅。好啦，我哋就要比較一下自花全粉同埋二花全粉啦，各自有啲咩好與唔好呢？而佢哋最歸結嘅最根本嘅分別呢，就係、是、二花全粉係牽涉咗兩個不同嘅個體，佢哋嘅基因嘅結合嘅。所以我哋就要講翻一啲有關於二花同埋自花全粉佢哋有關於演化嘅。优势啦，当我哋要去比较佢哋嘅好处唔好处呢？原来我哋嘅焦点呢，应该係擺返喺基因变异、哦。喺二花全粉嘅情况呢，佢哋嘅后代係有多一啲嘅基因变异嘅，相比起自花全粉，基因变异佢又对于自然选择、对于演化又有啲咩嘅重要性呢？呢一句就讲返啦 ，individuals with v a r i a n t 即係话啦，有不同特征嘅个体呢，就能够容许到个自然界去选择佢哋啦。呢、这個都係當初我哋講演化啦，講自然選擇啦，我哋要提及嘅變異呢一樣嘢係對於自然選擇尤其重要，因為如果全部生物都一模一樣嘅話，談何選擇啊？你只係一係全部生存。
一系就全部死晒。有啲生物咧，佢有一個較為適合嘅特性，去適應到呢個環境轉變，佢有大啲嘅機會去生存同埋繁衍。呢個就係適者生存啊嘛，就將呢一個適應嘅特性咧傳俾下一代。但係啦，如果全部一模一樣嘅話，有咩好揀呢？師咧仲有一樣嘢咧想提下大家嘅，就係、是、有啲同學咧佢哋誤會咗。自花全粉系一款无性繁殖，所以咧佢哋讲得好斩钉截铁嘅，就系自花全粉所产生出嚟嘅后代咧系冇基因变异嘅，呢、這个 concept 系错到飞起啊！因为啦，无论你系自花全粉，亦或系二花全粉咧，你哋都系有性繁殖，因为呢两个过程都牵涉咗受精作用，所以对于基因变异嘅比较咧，你见我都系讲多与少，我唔会讲有定冇嘅。好，跟住啦，就去到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目呢，就用全粉去理解。全粉有两样嘢可以考我哋嘅。今次考嘅呢，就係自花全粉同埋二花全粉。下一次考我哋嘅咪就係风梅花或者松梅花囉。过往啦，我哋都讲过呢条题目㗎啦，係咪？咁啊，自花全粉同埋二花全粉啦，刚刚先讲完啦，佢哋都係有性繁殖啦。而有关于松梅花同埋风梅花呢，引申到嘅呢，就係一啲。ecosystem 生態系統嘅概念啦，生物之間有啲咩嘅互動呢？我個蜜蜂啦，就幫嗰個花咧去傳花粉，同一時間咧，朵花咧都會提供翻一啲花物去俾嗰個蜜蜂嘅。啊，呢個關係叫咩名呢？跟住啦，就去到比較啦。有啦，對於自花全粉、二花全粉、風梅花、松梅花，梗係有得比較啦。唔同種類嘅花，佢哋要進行自花或者二花嘅全粉，或者依賴於風或者依賴於蟲去傳播花粉呢佢哋都有特定嘅適應性特徵嘅。呢啲你識未呢？好啦，我哋再推深一步，就係、是、將花呢個繁殖嘅結構同我哋人類嘅繁殖系統做個比較，有啲咩相似，有啲乜嘢不同呢？再推多一步嘅，就係、是、將植物嘅有性繁殖同植物嘅無性繁殖，亦即係營養繁殖呢，做一個比較啦。有啲咩好處呀？有啲咩唔好處啦？今次呢，就係歸結於全花粉同埋受精啫。過往都有題目去考埋我哋有關於果實同埋種子嘅概念嘅，望呢啲題目你做咗同埋明白未呢 t w o one seven question three is about the plant reproduction. So we can see from this diagram, it shows the certain processes occurring in a species of flowering plants. There are two plants here, individual one and individual two. They are of the same species, and there are three flowers. We need to focus on flower A, B, and C. Part A, what is process Y? So we can see that process A and process Y they are pollination. So in part A, it asks us to distinguish self pollination from the cross pollination. When we are going to distinguish different concepts, we need to recall the definitions. For the self pollination, the transfer of pollen glands to the stigma of the same flower or to the stigma of another flower on the same plant. So you can see that for process X, from the flower B to the flower A. They are in the same tree, so process X it should be the self pollination. Even for the flower B, it transfer the pollen gram from itself go back to itself. Flower B, it is also self pollination. And what about process Y? It's about the transfer of pollen grams from the flower B to the stigma of flower C in the individual two of the same species. So this process is cross pollination. For part A, any possible question variation. This time it asks us to identify process Y only. So next time it may ask you to identify process X and explain your answer. So you need to recall the definition to explain that why you can draw this conclusion. And for part B, after process Y has complete. We need to describe the sequence of events leading to fertilization. So we need to focus on this diagram. First of all, pollen glands land on the stigma of the same species, and in the pollen glands, what does it contain? It contains the male gamete. And for the sugary solution on the stigma, it will stimulate the germination of the pollen gland, and then there will be a pollen tube developed from the pollen gland. And the male gamete it will travel along the style and then towards the ovary to reach the ovary. And then the male gamete it will be released to the ovary to fuse with the female gamete to form the cycle. Fusion of the male gamete with the female gamete it is the fertilization. And one reminder for this question: pollen glands is not equal to male gamete. Ovary is not equal to female gamete. So what is the relationship between them? Pollen glands carry or contain the male gametes, 
overlooks carry or contain the female gamete. The metaphor is that the water bottle it contains the water. We cannot say that the water bottle is the water. Get it? And for part C, we need to explain why process Y cross pollination is better than process X self pollination in terms of evolution. So you can see the table for the comparison between self pollination and the cross pollination, and the advantages and the disadvantages, and the definition of evolution. For the definition of evolution, evolution is the process by which new species are formed from pre-existing organism over a period of time. After the definition of evolution, we need to compare the self-pollination and the cross-pollination. Fundamental difference between them is the cross-pollination involves the combination of genes from two different individuals. Therefore, we need to relate the specific advantages related to the evolution. It's about the genetic variation. The cycles or the offspring produced from the process Y have a greater genetic variation than those from the process X. And then we need to recall the importance of the genetic variation for the natural selection. So the individuals with the variant would be the candidates for natural selection. What do we learn from the natural selection is that if all the organisms they are identical, they are genetically identical. Somehow, there is no natural selection because all of them, they either survive or they all extinct, they all die. It's because if the individual, they have a certain favorable characteristic, so they can survive and then to reproduce. What if they do not have such favorable characteristic, they will have a lower chance of survival and reproduction, so the population size will be smaller and smaller. Therefore, we need the variation to provide the candidates for the nature to select. One reminder for this question, some students, they misunderstand that self-pollination is a kind of asexual reproduction. Therefore, there is no no genetic variation, which is a very wrong, wrong, wrong concept. So you can see that from this table, for the disadvantage of self-pollination, we just say that the offspring have less genetic variation. However, the advantages of cross-pollination we say that the offspring have more genetic variation. We do not say that then there is genetic variation in the cross pollination. We don't say that because both self pollination and cross pollination are sexual reproduction, which involve fertilization. Therefore, it is not the matter of yes or no genetic variation, but more or less genetic variation in the plants. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question it starts from the pollination, and there are two types of concept. It can check you about the self pollination versus the cross pollination, and the wind pollinated flower versus the insect pollinated flower. And for the cross and self pollination, there are the sexual reproduction. And for the wind pollinated and insect pollinated flowers, you can extend the concept to talk about the ecological interaction. What is the interaction or the relationship between the butterfly and the flower? When the butterfly helps the flower for pollination, meanwhile the flower produces the nectar for the butterflies. So what is the relationship between them? And then we can compare the self and the cross pollination and compare the wind pollinator and insect pollinator flowers for the adaptive features. Then we can extend the concept furthermore to compare the plant's reproduction and the human reproductive system. And we can also compare the sexual reproduction in the flowering plant and the asexual reproduction in the flowering plant. It is the vegetative propagation. And in this question, it checks you about the pollination and fertilization. And in some other questions, it can check you the concept about the fruit and the seed. So did you go through this question already? No matter they are the MC or the long questions.